Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. It's This is the Greg and Don show. <laughs> there we are. It's not, the it's dog and the pony Greg, show. <laughs> yeah, it's, not, it's not the Greg and Don show. It's uh, Greg and Don talking about sales and uh, beyond the pitch. Yeah. And beyond the pitch, like we all seem to have a pitch that we give to our clients. And we actually, I think it, some people don't like that idea. They don't like the thought of the pitch. And But I think aside from calling it the pitch. I think we, we should recognize that when we greet somebody, when we greet a client, we just about always do it the same way every time we do it. And recognizing that, what would be so wrong or why don't we uh, take the time to uh, write down what we say and improve it? But that's just an aside. That's not what we're about today, though. No, anyway. but listen, just on that aside, I think that's a damn good idea. I love the name Beyond the Pitch because it is beyond the pitch. What's beyond all this? What's behind the door, behind the curtain? So I like what, we're, what we've created here because I think it gives a little deeper meaning to it. Yeah, we, we try to take people beyond the pitch. It's about, yeah. building, it's about building yourself. That's what we're doing with this current series we're doing. We're doing John Maxwell's 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. And guess what? Today we're on Law 15. Yeah, the final, the final finale law. Here. We're on the final law, and that is the law of contribution. I'm here with my friend Greg DeMarco, and Greg is a longtime salesperson, business person, and a mentor to new business people, and he has some really good things and really good thoughts. So we're going to listen to what Greg has to say today. Oh, you're just passing the buck off to me, aren't you, Don? <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited because, you know, you can listen to what John Maxwell says about a lot of things. And you know what? The guy's in his 70s. He's written, what, 140 some odd books, 70? I have no idea, but he's written a lot of books. I think it's close to 100. Is it 100? Okay. Well, I, don't think he's written, I don't think he's written 100, but I think it's getting close to 100. He just well, released a new one, too. Oh, did he? So, yeah. listen, he's written 100 books, let's say. He's got a lot of good things to say. I don't agree with every single thing he says, but I can tell you this. He's bang on with most of the stuff that he discusses. You know, he, kick, he calls it the law of contribution, the 15th invaluable law. And I think there's some key points regarding the role of giving back in this process of growing which applies obviously to our salespeople here. And because, listen, I, I think it's all intertwined. Personal growth, if you're not personally growing, if you're in sales and you're not personally growing, you're staying stagnant and you're living in mediocrity because you're just living the status quo. And we have to personally grow ourselves, no matter what it is we want to accomplish in life, if we're not personally growing ourselves, we're not going anywhere. I don't care what anybody says, it comes down to two things. We're either external people or internal people. External people tend to control what they care more about what other people think. They try and do things for others as opposed to true doing things for themselves. Not that I'm saying that being selfish is a good thing. What I'm saying is the more we direct in towards ourselves to grow ourselves, the better off we are in finding our purpose, our why, everything about life. So this law of contribution is it, it, I, I'll break it down into some key points here. And one of them is fulfillment, which he talks about fulfillment, which is basically giving back to giving back, which allows individuals to experience a sense of fulfillment and purpose. So when you contribute to others, whether through mentorship or charity or whatever it is, any form of assistance, you positively impact other people's lives, which can be deeply rewarding for you and them. So a very yeah, yeah. large part of it is fulfillment. Yeah. They, he talks about being, being a river and not a reservoir. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we, like, we can tend to, well, I can tend to take in so much or learn different things, but I need to learn how to give back. I need to learn how to, and that's, I think what you're talking about is giving back and helping other people. And that's when you're a river, not a reservoir. Yeah, because I think if you keep things to yourself, you're not helping anything, including yourself, truthfully. Yeah. So if you're in a sales environment, if we try and relate this back to sales, help the others in the office, help your comrades, your, your colleagues, help them 
be better. And I was talking about this the other day in a group, and I said to them, because they were concerned, they were talking about their up system and leads and all this. And I said, think of it this way. People need to, you, you need to help each other. The more we all grow, the more prosperous everybody's going to be, including the company, including this, including that. But if we just keep it stuck to ourselves and we don't help each other, nobody's going to get anywhere. This is going to be an awful environment to, to work in if everybody's out for themselves instead of trying to help one another grow. And I think that's an integral part of being successful. Yeah, we have to collaborate. We have to learn how to collaborate with other people. Yeah, and that's the bottom line. I think the second point is learning and reinforcement. Teaching others or helping others reinforce. When you start to help others, you're reinforcing your own skill set, aren't you? Yeah. And you're actually helping to improve it because you're gleaning things from other people. And as you explain concepts or skills or, or you guide others through challenges, I think it really deepens your understanding and mastery of those concepts themselves because you're starting to, if you can teach them, then you start to, it solidifies, I think, a, a certain thinking process that allows you to continue to grow. And you actually start to grasp those concepts. And this process of teaching, I think, just reinforces your own learning and contribution to your own personal growth. That's how you improve, by teaching others how you're doing it. Yeah, the, I, I like what he says in the book. He says that we need to be, first we need to be grateful. And yeah. uh, until you're grateful, you can't be, you can't give. So if you're not grateful for what you have, then you're not going to be able to give it back to other people. And that's what you're talking about is being able to give back to other people by teaching, by mentoring, by, by collaborating, by all these different things, all these different ways of doing things. You're giving back. So you have to really be grateful for what you've been blessed with first. Yeah, that's a really good concept, Don. I think, I think when I look back at some of the issues I've had in my life, I really think that I wasn't. It's easy to turn around and say after the fact, oh, I should have been more grateful about this and that. And of course, I think I should have. And I think we all should be grateful for what we have and, and what we're experiencing. And I think that's a really important point. I think it's, yeah. it's probably underplayed too much. Yeah, sometimes we, we don't recognize what we have until we lose it with our health. Yeah, health, maybe you know, a relationship. Yeah. There's lots of things, and you're right. And that's a good point to make is just to be grateful for the people in our lives, the things we've learned for lots of things, maybe being appreciative of those that have helped us get to where we are, but we never really thank them enough and or yeah. being grateful enough for it. But I think that the, the third point I'd like to make is about uh, expanding your, your level of influence. So by, by giving back, when you start giving back, you, you start to expand your influence. People start to get to know you. And as you positively impact those people around you, you reach and influence growth, I think, which can open up new op opportunities for growth and development, right? Because as you expand your influence, other people are starting to take notice. I think that's an important one too. And yeah, I think, I sorry, go ahead. No, expanding your influence, I think, is uh, giving back. That's yep. how you're doing it. It's all, it's all part of the same thing. Yep. And another point I think is that John makes is about networking and, and relationships. So you're interacting with others and you're building relationships, obviously. You're building that network up. And these connections provide valuable support. They provide guidance. They provide opportunities of growth. They provide you with an income because you start to find new buyers. Networking with like-minded individuals is, or, or even mentors can expose you to new ideas and, prospect, and perspectives. And I think that's really the most important part is that you start to gain new ideas. This is where your imagination starts to really take blossom, I think. Yeah. I think when you talk about imagination, though, that's something that, that I think we have very much under, can underestimate as well, because our, our imagination is, is where our creativity comes from. And yep. sometimes we, we, like when you're a child, your imagination, you live in your imaginary world sometimes. 
but as an adult, we have to actually learn how to go back and uh, recreate some of our imagination. <laughs> it's harder when you get older, Don. <laughs> I, I know because we become cynical. We, we think, okay, like, why doesn't this work? But imagination is interesting. Uh, I, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> I think we have to also, when we go back to the idea of giving and expanding our influence, that's about the people. It's about giving back to the people. And he makes a couple of points as well in, in the book about, he says, don't let people own you. Yeah. And that can really... You can be in a relationship with somebody, but if they own you, if they do, if everything, they expect you to provide everything for them or they expect you to be giving all the time and they're not giving anything back, that's not a healthy relationship. No, it's not. And, and it's something you do have to, you have to watch out for. I've seen, I've listened to John Maxwell in life and I, that reminds me of a topic that he had brought up uh, regarding that very topic that you just discussed and he's right never appear that you're in the position of that because that's when uh, you can be taken advantage of and not only that's not a very good position to be in you want to be giving freely back and forth the whole point of growing with people and helping them is giving to them and they're giving to you it's a reciprocal relationship right yeah, you don't want to give so much to somebody that they feel obligated that you're holding them back actually by their obligation to you. And by the same token, you don't want to have you don't want to have that obligation to somebody else. Here's an example. You and I have been doing this this vlog, blog, podcast, whatever we call it. We're two old guys doing this, so we really don't know what to call it. <laughs> But we've been doing this for a while now. We got over uh, probably over a hundred videos up there, and uh, but that doesn't mean. And we've learned a lot. We've we've each learned a lot from the process of doing this. But that doesn't mean that if one of us decided to do something else, that the other should say you can't do that because I've you, you and I are on this journey together. We have to do it together. At some point in time, we won't be doing this together. Either either you'll get too old and die, or or I'll. Get old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be. It could happen. <laughs> or whatever. There could be something else. Something else that happens. But that's <clears throat> so we don't need to have that obligation. I'm not obligated to Greg because Greg has done this vlog with me, right? We do this because we like to help each other and we like to help other people. You know, that's yeah. what we do. It's interesting you're talking about this because I had this very discussion the other day with a friend of mine. And it comes down to purpose. And our purpose and to be living a fulfilled life comes down to us having that purpose. No specific person controls that but ourselves. In other words, that's what you're right. Eventually, we'll go our separate ways. We'll do something. We'll probably always still be friends. But it doesn't, matter, doesn't mean we're going to be doing this together forever. Yeah. And I don't need, sorry, Don, but I don't need you to fulfill my purpose and you don't need me to fulfill yours. I, I was in a I was in a, a mastermind group last night <clears throat> on a call and one of the exercises they did, I don't know if you're familiar with Henry Cloud, Dr. Henry Cloud. He wrote a book with, I forget his, he's, his other, the other author of the book is well known as well. I just don't remember his name, but they wrote a book called Boundaries. Oh, and, yeah, I know the book. I, yeah. I haven't read it, though. I have not read that book. Yeah, but it's an interesting book because it goes to what we're talking about here today. And they actually have a, they, uh, I ran across, a, they through that, they have an assessment. They have a, a boundaries assessment where they give, you know, about 20 different scenarios. And, you you know, you pick different options and, and you actually are able to uh, determine whether or not, you know, you're, whether or not you're very good at setting boundaries. And so one of the things is they use different examples that, that I didn't really find all that relevant to me because I guess I don't always, I don't work in a typical work environment, but you could relate to them and you under, I understood them. But it was interesting that I apparently am not good at setting boundaries, <laughs> but boundaries, setting boundaries is something else that, you know, that we should talk, that you could talk about in that when we talk about don't let people own you. Yep. Because some uh, boundaries make, he, Dr. Cloud gives a, he has a good little video on it. And he, and he talks about how, think of your boundaries as the plot of land. Like you own your house and you have a plot of land and it has these boundaries. It has these lines on the map 
that show where where your property goes and then fences make good neighbors but walls you can't build a wall because that's not that doesn't make for good neighbors because you want to have your fence should have a gate so that your neighbor can come visit you your neighbor can come see you when they need you but you don't want somebody to take advantage of that gate so you have to have these boundaries so what you do within your set of boundaries is your responsibility those are that's what you do that's and and our, we should look at our life in the same way we have what we how we develop ourselves establishes the boundaries of who we are and we shouldn't let somebody else come in and infringe on those boundaries anyway that's that maybe that's another book <laughs> yeah no that could be another book but it's a good point i think and uh i think listen in in the 15 invaluable laws i think maxwell introduces the concept of what he calls true significance in life comes from making positive differences in others in other people and he argues that the success should not be measured solely by personal achievements or material wealth which is an important distinction but rather by the impact one has on others and the world around them and he goes by these specific things that he talks about like the paradox of significance, the ripple effect, finding your unique contribution, and leaving a legacy. I have a little problem with legacy, that word legacy, and I know what they're trying to accomplish, but I do have a little bit of an issue with legacy. But I understand the importance of sharing what you have and leaving that behind, what you've learned. I think that's really important. But the paradox of significance is what the nature of what he talks about is the nature of significance highlighting that the more you focus on contributing to others the more successful and fulfilled you'll become and he emphasizes the importance of shifting focus from self-centered goals to serving others as this leads to personal growth and fulfillment and i think it's an important thing to mention yeah, no, that, that is. And I, I think that's a good way for us to leave this, leave this call is to encourage people to self-reflect on wh- how, are, how are they contributing to others? How are you contributing? I, I, our world so today is so individualistic. It's all about the, the individual. It's, and I think in, in, in times gone by, it was about the community. And I think there's, certain it's good to 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 strive to be better at who you are but to strive to be better for at who you are to improve your community i think is a worthier goal yeah that would that has to have to flesh that out a little bit but i think i'd like to encourage our listeners to 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 think about that think about what it is that you're trying to accomplish in in your life and through a book like 15 invaluable laws of growth it has a lot of good thoughts, and I want to encourage you to to pick it up and yeah. read it. It's an easy read. It's not a hard read at all. John is engaging. He he tells lots of great stories. <laughs> so, yeah, no, he's uh, always got a story. That's for sure. Yeah, and yeah, he tells lots of great stories, and sometimes in different books, he t- I think he tells the same story, but just in a little <laughs> different ways. But he's he's an engaging author, and he's a great guy. And uh, yeah, uh, I encourage you to get the book. Thanks, Greg, for going through this book with us. Yeah, and no worries. For, for helping us out. And uh, we're looking forward to our next project, which we'll have to discuss. Maybe we'll discuss it after we get off this call. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm Don Gertz, and this is my friend Greg DeMarco. And uh, we're with uh, Beyond the Pitch. And that's all about uh, being more than just a sales call. So That's right. Take care. Thanks. See ya. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> There you go. Subscribe. Thank you.